Rockies. Do you have anything cool coming to the menu that you want to let us know about? Our smoked wings, a majority of the people that I talk to don't say that um, they're the best wings they've had in a long time. They say they're the best wings they've ever had. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out another episode of the Aaron Advantage podcast. I am very excited to be joined today by my friend, David Parker, owner of Primetime Pub and Grill and Prime Sports. David, how you doing today? I'm great, Aaron. How you doing, brother? I am doing pretty good. Uh, I know you mentioned that it's not as cold as I think it is, but uh, this this winter weather is, I wasn't prepared for it. Well, uh, nine degrees, right? Or what is yeah. it, seven? You seven said yeah, seven in? degrees whenever I came in this morning. So not a, not a fan of that. Yeah, we, uh, you know, in the restaurant world, it can be a little bit concerning because this is a great time of year where pipes freeze and things like that. Right. And uh, no water equals no open. So mm, Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That could definitely put a damper on the situation. Yep. So uh, let, let's talk a little bit about, uh, obviously, people are more familiar with Primetime Pub and Grill. Another reason to stay in Newburgh, the first spot that you guys opened. I'm a huge fan. I've had uh, you guys on the podcast previously in the past, and uh, I'm just always excited to be able to highlight our local businesses. So why don't we talk a little bit about how uh, you got Primetime up and running. Obviously, you've had some success and expanded in some other areas. Yeah, so I've uh, been in the restaurant business for about 25 years and before Primetime. I uh, just did it for other people. And uh, after going through a buyout from another private equity and watching that transition unfold, uh, I decided that I wanted to uh, start my own business. That was what really got me going is that I, I'm going to start a business. I want to start something that's about people uh, and the people who are closest to the cash register versus uh, being just about profit, money, and and all that, right? And, and and also being about in the being about the community, right? The community mm. that we're in that we serve. You know, we make our money there, we employ there, so we have an obligation to be a part of that community and give back. So uh, that was why Prime Time even started. Nice. Uh, it, it's um, I've had about fifteen other restaurant ideas, uh, so this is you know maybe <laughs> number sixteen. <laughs> um, and the way we found it is uh, I simply Googled, you know, what are people looking for at Evansville, right? And um, it was, they were looking for a place with good prime rib or a good burger uh, or seafood. And I wasn't really interested in getting into the seafood game. Uh, I know beef pretty well. So right. that's the direction we went. And, and then as we built the menu and everything is, you know, we opened in Newburgh because that's where the spot was, mm. you know, and I live in Newburgh. Uh, my kids grew up here. And so I wanted to create something uh, for Newburgh that, uh, that, I felt like the community wanted. So we had asked for a lot of feedback from the community about what do you want? Like what kind of beer do you want us to carry? And what kind of wine do you want us to have? And what kind of bourbon? What do you want to see on the menu? And we wanted to create something that was so people didn't have to leave Newburgh. Right. To be able to get what they wanted. Yeah. So uh, you told us what you wanted. We gave you that. Now we're here in Newburgh. So now we have another reason to stay in Newburgh. And I love it. And I got to say, the fact that you took the time to listen to the audience before you got started and really put a menu together that hits all of the needs, not just the food needs, but like you said, the bourbon, the wine, the beer selection. I've got to say, you know, I've traveled a lot of places uh, through my real estate career and I've seen a lot of other spots that just don't have the amazing selections of all of those options that you guys have. And I think you've done an excellent job of making sure that you're satisfying the need of all of your customer base. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And, and it was intentional, right? Yeah. So um, it, when you do it, you think you know, right? but you don't know, right? You have to get open and let people experience it. And, you know, we're certainly not perfect. Uh, we've had our fair share of, of hiccups, but um, I think one of the things that we try to do, if you let us know as a guest that we messed up, we try to re recover or mm. respond appropriately. And uh, my experience has always been that uh, if, if, if you let us know and give us a chance to recover, respond, um, then we'll we'll probably get you back. We're going to go a little further than we have to. Yeah. No, and I, I like the fact that you refer to your customers as guests because I definitely feel like a guest when I come in there. Um, you know, I've been a patron for a long time, so mm -hmm. I know most of the staff and they all know me by name and they make sure to come by whenever we're there with the family and everything and make sure everybody's doing well. I do have a slight bone to pick. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it, it's the fact that uh, I can't get out of there without my daughter's refusing to eat their dinner because they love the chocolate cake. Libby and Carly like absolutely have to have the chocolate cake every time we come in there. Well, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty good. They love it. And so I think the first time we had it, uh, 
I can't remember which manager it was, but uh, they had just behaved so well that night that he gave us a slice just to say, hey, thanks for being great customers. And uh, we have not been back another time without having a, another slice of that chocolate cake. So it works. It does work. <laughs> it does work. And it's appreciated as much as uh, as much as I like to give them a hard time about it. It is definitely appreciated. Good. So um, another thing I wanted to talk about specifically about uh, the location there in Newburgh, obviously you've been able to expand from the one side of the uh, strip where you're at into the event space that you have. Um, And something that you're doing with uh, Dane that's really cool that I haven't seen a lot of other places do is these bourbon dinners that you've put together in the past. Can we talk a little bit about those? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So about every month or two, uh, we've been putting, they're called a bourbon dinner, which I think is a little misleading. I think we'll have to talk about changing the name of it. Because um, it's not like a five-course meal. These are right. all small plates, as you know, um, and then it's paired with a bourbon uh, distillery. And so usually a representative from that distillery will come in, and then they'll walk us through each one of the different samples that we're trying. Uh, and then, obviously, Chris puts together a, a just a really terrific, unique menu. Mm-hmm. It's uh, nothing that you can get into the restaurant, uh, and which is cool, right? So we get like we had those Dr. Pepper wings, which were fantastic. Yeah. I still want those on the menu. <laughs> yeah, and and people are still raving about those. We we've transitioned that into some other recipes, but um, it, it is it's a very cool, unique experience. We're now moving into some other things. We've done a tequila one that we did on the patio this last summer. Uh, the one coming up this week is actually a rum, Diplomatico. Nice. And uh, then the next one after that, I think, is vodka, and then we have a wine. Very cool. So, it's, up. so that's, it's like that's a spirit experience, for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Uh, and, and the thing that I like about it, I actually just came off of a uh, weekend trip to Louisville, and we went and visited uh, three different distilleries while we were there and took the tour and everything. And I got to say that having the rep from the distillery come in to talk about kind of the process of how they develop the different flavors and how they pick the bottles and everything, it's a really cool experience that you don't get outside of a distillery that often. And Mm -hmm. I think having that option is something super unique that you guys are doing that I haven't seen anywhere else. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's been a lot of fun. I mean, when you, when you engage uh, culinary people in culinary things Mm -hmm. and they get pretty excited. And I think that's probably been the coolest thing for me, you know, behind the scenes is seeing how Chris has really um, uh, jumped in on this and is so engaged and so energized by it. You know, last, last May, you know, we unfortunately very suddenly uh, lost our culinary manager, Andre, right. and, um, you know, he, he was young. Yeah. Uh, and it was sudden. And so Chris kind of took the helm. He was our assistant uh, kitchen manager at the time, uh, and he's taken this on. And I think that, that he has been, again, so energized by this. Uh, and it's interesting because for him, he feels like he's always trying to bring some of those flavors that Andre – had some of the ideas right. around recipes and things that hadn't come to the restaurant yet. Right. He tries to get those out in the bourbon dinners. Right. Very cool. But but he does it himself. It's all his. I'm not trying to take away from what he's doing. I'm just saying that I think that's what inspires him. Very nice. Yeah. And and, and I I've always been very impressed by the food every time I've been there uh, for the bourbon dinner, the the regular menu, everything else. So um, you said something a little bit ago that I kind of want to hit on a little bit. You mentioned that you're spinning off some of these ideas that you've had from these dinner and these pairings to kind of uh, see how you can put those into other recipes. Do you have anything cool coming to the menu that you want to let us know about? Well, we do. We, uh, we you know, so like everybody else, we feel the pinch of mm-hmm. rising costs, uh, particularly in food, and for us, particularly in beef. Right. Uh, you know, there's four major slaughterhouses in the U.S., and they've just decided that this is all we're going to make until people stop paying that price for it. Mm. Um, and so uh, we decided that you know, hey, if you're not growing, you're dying. We recognize that, and so we we have these uh, uh, offerings that we make that are that are you know, short term, like mm-hmm. a limited time offer, uh, like in the summer and, and other things, we have a lint menu coming up, but this one was a more significant menu change, right? So we had about 17 or 18 things that either came off, went on, or we actually changed the, the existing recipe. Gotcha. So, um, and we, we, we did a lot of it with the idea of trying to bring cost down a little bit. So it's, it's a little bit more reasonable to go out and eat. I mean, um, you know, our, our classic burger is an example, right? right. It's, it's $15 and that's pretty expensive for a burger, but it's a half pound burger with ground ribeye and comes with a side. Right. And even if you go to, you know, pick a fast food chain, 
um, you can get a quarter pound burger and fries and a drink for twelve dollars. Exactly. People don't realize how much the cost of beef has just skyrocketed. Yeah, and we what we've done is we've tried to not take any price on a lot of stuff. In fact, we've actually we we did originally. We're now starting to take some price down and and change how we how how what what our offering is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've made some new offerings that that we think are pretty craveable. You know, we uh, our new meatball fettuccine marinara is is really really great. Nice, uh, but it's got a nice entry price point at fourteen or fifteen ninety nine. Uh, we have a a new panko breaded fried shrimp, which Ooh. is an awesome product, and you can get it as an app or an add on or even an entree. Nice, and that's like fifteen ninety nine. So these those are pretty reasonably priced items. Um, uh, my favorite thing that we've added is a chicken fried chicken. So we uh, pound uh, a chicken breast, it's breaded, and then we fry it. Uh, but then it comes served with mashed potatoes, white gravy, and another side. I like mm. it with the vegetables, but um, it is by far and away my favorite. And we can bring that in at sixteen ninety nine, which is a very reasonable menu offering, but particularly when you consider our bar, our bar pricing is very, very reasonable. Oh, yeah. And our service model is intended to almost over-serve you. So um, that's why I say if we miss and you let us know, we're going to fix it because we kind of have an expectation around service yeah. that's higher than than your normal place. And, and that that's something I definitely wanted to touch on about primetime that I love. You know, I, I've told people a lot of times that I could go to a restaurant where they miss on the food big time, but if the service is still good, I'll give them another shot. And Almost always the rule. Yeah, and I will tell you, the, the service has always been exceptional, above and beyond. Like I said, you know, I go there all the time to a point where people know my name. They greet me as soon as I walk in. It, it's it's feeling like you're hanging out with friends as opposed to going and having an experience at a restaurant, which is something that I absolutely love about it. Awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. And yeah. we and we, we talk about it internally, too. We, we've been very fortunate. You know, we – so – when we opened, we made it through our first year, which is kind of the milestone for right. for non franchise restaurants, and we celebrated our one year on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday, woohoo! And on Monday, they shut the shut everything down for COVID. Yeah, um, and so we had to find different ways to try and get through that. We created those box lunches mm-hmm. that you could just drive up, and we'd have somebody outside under a tent and um, and some things like that. We created a no contact catering. So everything was individually wrapped, and we got to do a lot of stuff for some schools and businesses that were still able to function. Uh, and then that's actually when we uh, we expanded our patio so there was more outside seating. We bought a food truck so we could start working in the subdivisions and bringing food to right. you. That was the intention at the time. Uh, and uh, we hired uh, uh, Kim, our catering manager, who um, has been fantastic. And and then we uh, everybody that wanted to stay employed, we employed, kept yep. all of our salaried people. So when we came out of COVID— we were really well positioned because we had a full staff and we were really hit the starting line running versus a lot of people going, you know, now we got to hire and what are we going to do? got to start and, all over. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for us, you know, we just came out running and that's been really, really great for us. Um, but it's because we took care of our people mm-hmm. whenever we were in that that kind of downturn. And now our catering is, is huge. This last uh, year we're doing – Really big events, sixteen, seventeen hundred people for box lunches or hot di- or hot meals. Um, uh, it, you know, we do offer bar service for weddings. We, yep. Some of the events that we've done are three and four hundred people for full buffet and and bars. So the the catering side's really started kicking off for us. Uh, and the food truck, again, originally to go to subdivisions, we now we're attending events and yep. we're going to people's parties. And you know, the last cool one we did, uh, we went to the uh, to a hospital where. A pharmacy rep was buying everybody lunch, oh, and they wow. so they sent everybody out over two hours, and we made all their food, and they wrote a check, and we left. And you're like, "Wow, that's pretty cool." Yeah, right. You can't beat that. Not to mention, I've seen you get competing in the uh, Evansville Barbecue Festival and other things. We we do like to do that. You know, the <laughs> the very first Evansville Barbecue Festival was was our first year, and we showed up with a generic canopy and a folding table. Yep, and a and a hot warmer. And we served our mac and cheese, which since then has won the Evansville Mac and Cheese Fest. Uh, and we served uh, the pork shanks, which are <sighs> super, super popular. Oh, yeah. Uh, and um, But also not on the menu anymore. Uh, and not until the price comes down on them because, you know, we're getting charged 4 and $5 a piece for those. And right. by the time, you know, you mark it up, people are like, I'm not paying that. So Exactly. Uh, but now it's turned into something, you know, much better because we can show up and actually represent with a food truck. Yeah, uh, and and be for those types of events, and that's been a lot of fun. The food truck festival is awesome. I remember seeing you out there for yep. that. Um, 
so the, the food truck, again, it was intended to be there for one thing, but now we've turned it into what a traditional food truck would be used for. Yeah, so. and, and it's another way for you to get out in the community and kind of yep. hear what people are thinking and have an opportunity to talk to them and, and maybe bring somebody in who hasn't been there before that mm-hmm. uh, doesn't have an opportunity to try stuff like that just by wanting to go and sit down at a restaurant. I think that's a really awesome opportunity to convert some more people into paying guests uh, in the future. Well, we, we look at it look at it as a, another opportunity to offer a service for the yeah. community, right? So like even in, in inclement weather, like we're experiencing now a little bit, mm-hmm. there'll be a lot of places that will close. We will actually open. Right. And, and what we tell our teams is we have, we have what we call snow team. But what we tell our teams is if you can get here, uh, great, we're going to make a run at it. And but if you can't and you don't feel safe about it, then stay home. Right. But we're going we're gonna to at least make a run at trying to get open because there are people who make their living in this weather. There are people who are go- that don't cook that are going to get out mm-hmm. and they're going to go somewhere. And to me, by opening, this is just an example, but by opening on these, these times, we are offering a service to the community. That they, they know they can trust us to be there when they need us. Oh, and right? not only that, you're, you're showing that you care more about the customer than you care about the profit, which is something that is Absolutely. rare these days, unfortunately. And I think that is a testament to why you've seen the success that you have, because people know that you care more more than you care about just earning off of them, and which I think is fantastic. Well, we have an obligation, like I said, to, to give back. You know, mm-hmm. we, we, we sponsor all kinds of things. I think last year, we uh, I think we ended up, uh, donating or participating in different things uh, north of twenty thousand dollars. Very nice. Uh, we've had some great fundraisers. Uh, some of them for not such awesome, uh, you know, events, but some of them for some great events in the schools. Uh, we have a teacher of the month program, which is one of the things I'm most proud of because I've done it for twenty five years. Right. My, my mother was a teacher. Uh, two of my sisters are teachers. My wife currently is a teacher, uh, and so I have a great appreciation for what. Uh, teachers go through and how what they have to do every day. I mean, it, it's so tough. But, you know, we have a ballot box in the front, you vote, uh, and then um, when you if, you, if you win, then we present you with a certificate, and uh, it's in a frame, and a $25 gift card, and then some cards for kids. Uh, the cool thing about it is that when I go in and deliver these, you're validating someone's decision right. for what they've decided to do with their life. And there's nothing cooler than to see the look on a teacher's face when she finds out that one of her students nominated her for this. I yeah. mean, that's just the coolest thing. Yeah, right? I, can't, I can't even Best imagine. Best part of my day. I, I can only imagine how awesome that experience has to be to be able to go in and do that. Um, you know, that that's one of the things that you do to give back to the community and recognize those things. Another thing that I think is uh, really awesome, um, on your social media, you always have the name of the day where they can come in and get a mm-hmm. reduced cost lunch. And I've never seen that before. And I just think it's an amazing way to say, hey, if your name happens to be Aaron today, come on in and get get a uh, free lunch. free lunch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, which is incredible to offer. Yeah, no, we those are all the good examples of uh, what we're trying to do with the community. So, um, you know, we do ten percent off for first responders on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. We do ten percent for teachers on Tuesdays. That's every single every single week. Every day we do twenty percent off for veterans. Being a veteran myself, I felt uh, obligated to be sure that we were offering something. Uh, for veterans every day. Right. Uh, and we do give backs probably on average of three or four a month just for local things in the community. Yeah, absolutely. So you uh, came to the community, you listened to the clients, uh, and over time you found that there was another need in the city of Newburgh, uh, which leads me to prime sports. Yep. Yep. No, it's a, uh, you know, when my kids were little, they watched uh, this animated movie, uh, Robots. And there was a, a character called Mr. Bigwell, and he always said, find a need, fill a need. And there for whatever go. reason, that's really resonated with me. Yeah. And uh, so it was finding a need and then going, hey, I need to fill this. And it was really basically what people were coming to me and saying they wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it, I, I paired this with an idea that I had had and been trying to figure out for a while, and that is the concept of a greaseless kitchen. Yep, I was right? going to get to that. So a, a kitchen with no grease, no fryers, we don't have a flat top, we don't have an, even a stove, actually. So, um, you know, how do you build a menu without those items? Now, fortunately, we do have another restaurant that we can right. prepare some things and then bring them over, but, um, you know, our wings, for example, uh, we don't cook them in a fryer, we bake them. Yep. Uh, we have a, a traditional stromboli that's, uh, I, I understand around here, I always see a stromboli, it's like a hoagie, right? Right. Um, but that's not the stromboli I grew up with. Um, and when I was in fine dining in St. Louis, we had a stromboli. So this is really just a very similar take on that recipe. 
but it's a traditional stromboli where you've where you've rolled out the dough and you put in the marinara and the sausage and the pepperoni and the mozzarella and you roll it and then you do it again and then you roll it and then you bake it and right. then we cut it into pieces and serve it with side of marinara. It is dynamite. I'm not sure if you haven't had it, but if you haven't, it is by far my favorite thing on the menu. Um, and then we also, uh, you know, again, find and eat, fill and eat. What kind of other pizza choices are there, right? I mean, mm-hmm. one of the jokes in every community, probably not just Newburgh, but definitely Newburgh, is, oh, just what we needed, another pizza place or another Mexican place, right? right? Um, and so there's a reason they keep popping up because yeah, pe- right. people love it. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but we wanted to have an offering that, that was different and unique to the area. So that was, uh, and it's something that I experienced, uh, in my days of travel, which I used to do a lot of, and that's a Detroiter style pizza, mm-hmm. right? So we, we really wanted to do a Chicago deep dish. That was what the original plan was. But what I determined is that, uh, the people of Newburgh are not patient enough to wait <laughs> an hour to an hour and 30 minutes for a pizza. Right. And to do a deep dish right, it takes a really, really long time. Absolutely. And so, uh, but we still wanted to do something that was different. So this Detroiter obviously is a, it's a little thicker crust. It's got a crispy edge of, of mozzarella around it, and it's a sauce on top pizza. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the one that we currently have is really big, and we're we're trying to figure out a half size of that but you know it's it's more than just saying well then cut it in half right you <laughs> yeah. you got to find the right pan you got to figure out how you're going to do the dough you got to figure out, so um we're still working on that and, and we'll get it figured out but uh yeah it, it's been great that our smoked wings a majority of the people that i talk to don't say that um they're the best wings they've had in a long time they say they're the best wings they've ever had right and if you haven't tried the smoked wings they're awesome and we got you know seven or eight sauces and some dry rubs uh, there's some other sandwiches as well. We didn't we didn't forget uh, people who are trying to be a little more health conscious, and we have some some pretty good salads. We have some wraps that are pretty good. Absolutely. Um, uh, and everything uh, is is very very appropriately priced. Yeah. So it's if you're on a budget, uh, you're gonna really like what you get for what you pay there. Yeah. And the other thing I gotta say is, you know, I. It, Whenever I heard you had a greaseless kitchen the first time, you know, obviously we came out for the kind of grand opening experience mm-hmm. and trying everything. And I was like, greaseless kitchen, what does that even mean? And all the food that came out, I'm like, all right, was this going to be microwaved? Which obviously I knew with you in the helm, there's no way that's what it was going to be. But I was like, I got, I got to see what this is like. And if I didn't know it was a greaseless kitchen, I never would have thought it was any different than anything else because it comes out hot, fresh, crispy, delicious every time. And I was like, all right, this this is a concept I can definitely get behind because I'm, I'm on that self uh, that health conscious kind of kick. And I try to make sure that I'm like, all right, I can't eat too much grease anymore. Cause it, it just tears me up. And I'm like, I got a great spot to go and enjoy. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. And, and, uh, you know, when we were creating it, it was, um, not just about the greaseless kitchen. That was me bringing that into what I felt like the community wanted. Um, and it's not like a regular sports bar. I know people hear sports bar and they go, Oh, great. There's a bunch of TVs and I can get a smash burger. Right. Hey, no, I, I don't have a smash burger. Uh, we do have lots of TVs. I think there's 17 of them. Uh, most of them are 75 inches, (laughs) as you know. Um, and then, uh, but there's other stuff to do while you're mm-hmm. there, right? So we got a couple pool tables, we got a couple dart machines, we got have golden tea. Uh, there's a bunch of little bar games over in the cubby that uh, are finally starting to get some traction, where people are like, "Oh, hey, we can play this while we right, like shut the box or the oh, yeah. thing." Um, so we wanted it to be someplace where you could have something to do as well. Uh, our tagline there is "It's fun in here," um, and we also were trying to meet the needs of the community, right? So. Where the location uh, of that restaurant is, there's about 20,000 people within a mile. Mm-hmm. And a majority of them are uh, either younger families or retired, so fixed income. And so that's why we wanted to make the menu uh, much more reasonable and cost conscious, uh, which is part of the reason we did pizza. And uh, the sauce is a winner, by the way. I'm, I don't know if you've had our pizza yet, but the sauce is an absolute winner, which is, is 90% pizza. I have, and it, it is delicious. Um so we we actually wanted to have a portion of the of the restaurant that could be just a dining room mm-hmm. at certain parts of the day while the bar can still be just a bar. But when we're busy, we need to be able to open things up. Right. Right. So we put in what I call the world's largest pocket door. Right. And <laughs> yeah. it's and it's not just a piece of wood that we closed or a barn door. It's it's a it's a real wall uh, that is hanging um, and also on casters. And we can open it up or, or shut it off. So that way, uh, if somebody's in the in people who go into the bar, there's like this unwritten rule I've learned uh, that if I see you in a bar, 
hey, we're both here, so that's cool, man. Don't worry about it. Right. But if you see me in a bar from the dining room, then I feel judged, right? <laughs> and yeah, and I know there, there are a lot of people who they, they don't want to see their clients and things like that uh, when they've decided to go have a couple beers with their brother and watch the game. Right. Because uh, you know, right, wrong, or different, you just feel like you're on display. And, Absolutely. And, and most people who sit in a bar don't want that. And most people who go in with their family into a dining room don't want that. You know, for, you know, I don't want a, my kids sitting here watching some guy get crazy, right? right. So uh, it gives us an opportunity to split that off at certain times. Uh, and then also when it gets a little later and the kids are at, you know, the young families are home or the kids are in bed, then we can open that up and it gets to be a really nice size room. And uh, we, we've needed it. We've yeah. needed it. This last this last Saturday was a was a wonderful example with all the football games and everything else. It was pretty you're, fun. You're, you're heading into the the heavy season right now with all the games going on and everything else. So I can imagine it's going to be a, a fun time in there. Yeah, you know, and it slides right into into March Madness, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, we're doing we're doing something this year with sports that um, we've done it at prime time the last four years. We're doing it again this year. We did it up north at the north location. It's it's very popular. But we're, we do a Super Bowl party, right? Mm, yeah. Uh, you know, the Super Bowl is national have a party at your house day, uh, f- uh, f- speaking from a restaurant business side. And so typically for us, it would be a very, very slow day. And if you don't do something, then you're almost better off to close because right. you'll, you'll have three guests all night. So what we do is we have a party. And for 25 bucks, you can reserve your seat, which is a really big deal mm-hmm. when you think about it. You know, you don't have to go there real early and sit there and be someplace for a long time. You have you've paid. You have reserved your seat. You know that's where you're going to be for the game. We mark it down. That seat's sold. You, no one else can take it. Uh, and so you can show up at four thirty or five thirty or you know right when the game starts if you want to. Um, and included in that, you get a raffle ticket, and we'll do raffles every quarter. And these are usually pretty good prizes, right? You know, worth worth north of a hundred dollars in most cases. And the last prize usually is a really good prize. Uh, includes three buffets throughout the game. You will not leave hungry. You will not leave hungry. I promise you. I believe it. Uh, and then there's there's also some just kind of takeaways that you get. There's always a some kind of uh, cool glass, like a lining cool glass or oh, something, yeah. that you, something that you can't just go buy somewhere. Very right? cool. So uh, we try to make it fun. We try to make it sh- so that you feel like there's a pretty good value. You just leave the cooking to us. All of our drink specials are really awesome. We'll have buckets and pitchers and um, you know, some kind of well special for the, for the non-beer people. And, um, and it's just nice because it, it's always rowdy, right? You, you always have a pretty good mix on who's rooting for who. Uh, there's o- both teams are almost always represented. I was going to say, it's probably split down the middle. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the commercials and the, uh, the halftime show is cool, but I think from my experiences in the first four years, the absolute coolest part of it, and maybe this is because I'm a veteran and i you know, sappy the way I am, but the national anthem seems to get the most attention of anything of the whole day. I mean, people are talking and doing all this stuff, but when they get up and they start singing and you just hear everybody and it's dead silent other than that. And it's the coolest, coolest thing. Cause it's not like that anywhere else I've ever been. Even, right. even at a game, there's always somebody that's so, um, so Hey, buy your tickets, right? They're 25 bucks. You reserve a seat. We've already sold, uh, uh, I think two of the tables at prime time. Fantastic. And, and where, where do people go to buy those tickets? They'll find you on Facebook or call in the store. Uh, what's yeah. The you best call, way? call in the restaurant. Very nice. Yep. Excellent. And what's the phone number? Just so everybody's got that handy whenever they're listening to this. Uh, okay. So you put me on the spot, but, uh, <laughs> I can, I know prime times by heart. It's eight, one, two, four, nine, Oh, zero, six, five, zero, zero, six, five. Uh, but you can go to the website. That's probably the easiest right. place and find all the information. You can even contact us and that's primetime Newberg at outlook.com or primetimenewberg.com, yep. uh, ptnorth41.com, or primesportsnewberg.com. Easy enough to find you. Yep. So, David, I think uh, I think we hit all the questions that I had for you today. I'm always very excited to hear what you have going on. Uh, you know you're going to see my face many times throughout the rest of 2024. <laughs> Whether I like it or not. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, is there anything specific that uh, we didn't touch on today that you want to make sure people know about? Uh, no, really, the I think the biggest thing for us right now is, you know, with the Super Bowl coming up, obviously, but we're going to have our five-year anniversary party on March 4th at prime time. In New nice. Bay. Very That'll excited. Be, we'll do a party or something. I think it's on a Sunday this year. Um, but this new menu is really cool. Yeah. I would just say come check it out. We've got some new sandwich options. We have some of the entrees that I shared with you. Uh, we've taken some price down on some items. Uh, we don't have credit card fees like a lot of places do, right. so we don't charge that onto the consumer. 
um, we did for a time uh, and decided pretty quickly that uh, we needed to find someplace else, mm-hmm. right? It was just a, it was just a negative thing. Even though the government's been doing it for 20 years, <laughs> um, uh, we just felt like it was better to, to remove that uh, and, and not have the guest pay that directly. No, so completely understand that. Um, but yeah, come check out the new menu. It's it's really, really good. Some of the new items are absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I got to say, uh, even though I haven't had all the new stuff, if it's anything like the original and the uh, <laughs> classics, I know it's going to be good. So Dave, thanks so much for coming in today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Aaron. My pleasure.